It's time for another Behind the Story story time. Uh, we had a great time interviewing Summer on Behind the Story. You can find that link in my bio. Um, she's a romantic, com uh, sweet and clean rom-com rom writer. Let me see if I can actually say that. Sweet and clean rom-com writer. Um, we had a fun time. And if you're familiar with the... Enneagram, um, drop what number you are in the comments. We've, we talked a little bit about that and how it plays into her characters. If you're not familiar with Behind the Story, it's an author interview show um, that I co-host with Lisa Renee, who is an Australian rom-com. Well, right now she's writing rom-com. And we just have a great time interviewing authors of great fiction and sweet and clean and Christian fiction. We have a great time with that. We put out new content two times a month and usually our guests are doing are being kind enough to sponsor a giveaway. So I'm highlighting on schedule today. I'm going to read a little bit from what I can find on the Amazon. Um, so you can enter in so you know if this is something that you would want to enter into and it's really super simple as you watch the interview that's in my bio um, and then um, just schedule is comment in on the there's a King Sumo so it's really easy to enter in you've got great odds of winning this um, it really is a fun time we had a great time with summer so Without, let me get this. Stop sharing. Okay, let me put this up here. There we go. Just try to get like the right angle, and then it's like takes me like two minutes to get there, and I'm like, why is this not the same from the last time? Like, who knows? Anyway, without further ado, here is an excerpt from On Schedule by Summer Dowell. Um, this is a, as I'm scrolling down, this is a, a series about, rem, um, wedding, wedding people, wedding planner. Um, today we have a photographer and a wedding planner, and this is book three in the series. So on schedule, chapter one, Avery. No, don't go back to New York. He's the one. Hope shouts, throwing a popcorn kernel at the screen. Relax. Haley waves her red vine like a baton. She's just going to return long enough to remember how unfulfilling her corporate job is. Then she'll come running back to Mr. Smalltown, who loves Christmas and puppies. How can she resist? I roll my eyes at my two best friends before glancing at the phone hidden under my thigh. It vibrated a second ago, and I want to double check. That's not anything serious. Avery, I can see it. Put it away. Dang it. I flip it over, hiding the screen's glow. Put what away? I grab the bowl of popcorn from Hope, digging my hand inside. None of your bride's emergencies are as important as you getting into the spirit of Christmas. I finger a poorly seasoned kernel. How do movie theaters always manage to get the perfect butter to popcorn ratio? Two parts butter to one part popcorn that these microwave bags never can. First off, I don't know if watching the Hallmark Channel counts as getting into the spirit of Christmas. I think I'm just realizing more and more how much I hate bad dialogue, I say before popping the butterless piece in my mouth. Second off, it's the beginning of November. I don't need to get into the Christmas spirit for at least a month and a half. Take it back, Haley says, aiming the inch of red vine she has left at me. It is never too early for the holidays, and there is nothing more festive than finding true love with a sensitive man wearing plaid. I grin. Ever since both of my friends got engaged, they've turned into dewy-eyed love experts. Hope sits up her feet almost dislodging Haley's half-empty can of Diet Coke on the coffee table. You know what the problem is? Avery just hasn't had her come-to-love moment. I cock an eyebrow. Don't you mean come to G? Oh my gosh, that's it! Haley grabs a soda and cradles it safely against her chest. 
With her free hand, she motions back and forth between me and the TV. <gasps> Avery is the ideal Hallmark protagonist. Just look at her. She's an obsessive workaholic, has marginal respect for the holidays, and doesn't have any idea what true love is. She's perfect. Why, thank you. You know, it's friends like you that really bol bolster a girl's confidence. They continue to ignore me as well as the attractive man with a perfectly groomed golden retriever on the screen. She is a little extreme, Hope says, nodding her head, independent, goal-oriented. I'm pretty sure she doesn't even own a Christmas tree. I'm right here. Once again, Haley cuts me off. You know what she needs? She pauses. Sometime, something I feel is an unnecessary dramatic effect. A serendipitous run-in with a genetically blessed man who has the heart of gold, she cries. Hope snags licorice, preferably one from her past that she scorned, but beggars can't be choosers. Ooh, she should be our holiday charity project this year. I'm not even sure if they're messing around anymore. Hope has this gleam in her eye that's making me more than a little nervous. Why are you guys talking like I'm not here? And since when have you ever done a Christmas charity project? I try to look unconcerned as I dig through the popcorn bowl for a butter-saturated piece. This isn't our inaugural year. Anyway, Hope, do you know anyone that fits that description? Hope grins as she chews. I mean, I'm sure Austin has a single buddy or two he could recommend. Uh-oh, this is getting into dangerous territory. I hold up one finger, no. No, I am not being set up with any of your fiancés, friends, co-workers, or any vague acquaintances. I am quite happy where my life is, with where my life is. I don't need love or some man who has a heart of gold or whatever it is you said. <gasps> See, Hope says, still addressing Haley. She's perfect. The classic hallmark denial. The lady doth gripe too much, methinks, Haley adds in a poor excuse for an English accent. You guys are ridiculous, and you got that wrong, Haley. I gave up my pursuit for the optimal piece of popcorn and just grab a handful. I am very happy you both found your soulmates and everything is daisies and roses now, but my life is... Ah, I lost it. But my life is great. I love my work. I love the success I'm having. For the moment, it is more fulfilling than any man or big romantic gesture could be. Yeah, she definitely needs to save the small town family business, Hope whispers out of one side of her mouth. Or maybe she needs a single dad trying to raise a kid by himself, Haley says, matching Hope's hushed tone. I chuck one of Hope's decorative throw pillows at each of them. Never mind. Haley laughs, catching the plush cushion. Scratch the single dad option. I don't know if I trust you around kids. Haley is close to getting another pillow thrown in her face. Seriously, though, Avery, Hope says, the mischief gone from her eyes. You can't mean that about love. Mean what? That I don't need it right now? Wide eyes stare back at me. <gasps> I sigh. I love these two like family, but they just don't get it. You both know I lost. You, aside, <laughs> that is not what Summer wrote. Excuse me. You both know my last boyfriend was a disaster. I say, thinking back to the six month relationship I ended two years ago. Why I ever thought that clingy Tom Richardson and I would work still baffles me. It taught me a valuable lesson. I don't have the headspace for love right now. I know it's great for some, but I have other things that I am focused on. Haley's face has sobered, her fingers playing with the edge of the pillow I've thrown at her. I know you love work, Avery, and that's great. You're an amazing at wedding planning, but are you sure that's the only thing holding you back? I feel a prickle of awareness on the back of my neck. Of course. 
as soon as work gets more stable, I'll have more time for all the things I've been putting off. Things like picking up yoga, learning a new language, drinking more water. Love is just an item on an endless list of things I want to cross off. Haley sends me a smile, but it's one of those sad ones. The kind a person gives you right after you trip in front of a crowd or call someone the wrong name. I know, sometimes it just seems like you're almost afraid of finding the right guy or something. Afraid you won't, I don't know, succeed at having a real relationship. If I had known this was going to turn into a therapy session, I would have made an excuse to miss our monthly girls night. Hope steps in now. It's true. It's almost like you're worried about failing at being a girlfriend or a wife one day. Whoa, things are getting way too deep. While I appreciate you're concerned, I'm not even slightly concerned about my dating capabilities and I promise not to pass up true love if it happens to smack me in the face. Then give us a chance, Hope says. You haven't been on a date since you broke up with Tom. Let us set you up with a couple of guys. If we miss the mark and none of them are true love, then we'll leave you alone. But if your feelings change, she lets her words trail off. Haley smiles and picks up the thread. Maybe we'll find your own Prince Charming. You'll find your own Prince Charming. I gag a little, just to clarify where I stand on the issue. Regardless, their hopeful little eyes zero in on me like a bunch of cute puppies at a pet shop. The kind they put in the window display just to draw you in. These girls will never give up. Fine. I held up three fingers. I'll give you three dates. Four. Haley smacks her forehead. Come on, Hope. Have you never negotiated? You need to go high so you can meet in the middle. She turns and narrows her eyes. Five. You can't strategize in front of me and expect it to work. Three or I'm walking. I fold my arms and wait. The two lean back into the couch, unsettling glee on both of their faces. Deal, Haley says. Now the real question is, are you in more into ice skating or cookie decorating? 29 and 30. I drop the hand weights, the tension leaving my muscles as I do. Let's move on to step four of smart marketing. Now consider the... Grabbing my phone, I switch off the podcast, playing at double speed in my ears and chug from my bottle. Oh, let me see, <laughs> double speed, let me see if I can get this. 29 and 30, I drop the hand weights, the tension leaving my muscles as I do. Let's move on to step four of smart marketing. Now consider that grabbing my phone, I switch off the podcast, playing at double speed in my ears and chug from my bottle. The cool water fills my parched throat as I swipe over to my phone's calendar. Scanning the to-do list for the day, I nudge the weights back into the corner of my living room. Sure, I'd have more equipment if I actually went to a, if I went to an actual gym, but who has half an hour to waste driving there and back every morning? I walk as I read, noting I have two early bridal appointments and then a dental appointment in the afternoon. I have to check out a venue for another bride as well as send out several vendor orders. I have a blog post going out tomorrow, and if I'm not mistaken, a wedding site is featuring one of my past receptions today. I turn on the shower head, cranking the temperature to scalding hot before peeling off my clothes. Most people would feel overwhelmed with the endless to-dos, but I thrive on them. I love nothing better than a long list of tasks to tackle. 25 minutes later, I'm dressed with my hair tied back and makeup applied. I even got a minute of meditation while I brush my teeth. Haley keeps telling me I need to try it. Although I'm sure she'd frown on my multitasking methodology, I snagged my leather tote bag off my table, glancing at the full-length mirror propped next to the hallway. My red fitted blazer adds a pop of color to the dark slim pants and white blouse. Professional, but not over the top. I'm heading out the door when the first call of the day comes in. My fingers slip in a near piece and I hit my Bluetooth on. This is Avery, I say in a polished tone. Avery, hi, this is Lauren Thompson. I wanted to talk about the flowers for my reception centerpieces. I'm not so sure anymore about the pink daisies. It's a good thing I love what I do. 
And there are like three more chapters on Amazon. That's the end that I'm, I'm gonna read for you today. But, um, but there's three more chapters on Amazon that are free in that preview, but it looks like it's a winner. Um, so click in my link, um, you'll find the behind the story <clears throat> um, link to YouTube. And then you can watch the full interview with Summer. You can enter into the King Sumo, which is in the description. And be sure to comment. Um, if you're going there for romantic comedy, be sure to put in there team rom-com. Um, so we can, we can kind of keep track of who's coming from where. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in to the story for behind the story. I'll have to come up with something a little bit more clever and cutesy than that. Um, thank you for listening to my, my little radio theater here, and I hope until the next time you pick up a good book and read it, and don't forget to leave a review. Thanks for tuning in.